episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is Cycle 1, Week 22, Science. For everyone else, that just means we're going to be talking about some weather fronts. Before we do so, go ahead and head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. Um, I've created workbooks that go with each of these videos um, and there are four worksheets per subject per video. I've also separated them by quarter so um, if you just want that last quarter for these videos you can do that as well. Now without further ado let's start doodling. To begin, we need to ask the question, what are weather fronts? Weather fronts are the boundary between two air masses of different temperatures. And these air masses don't typically mix, but the differences in temperature and pressure can cause clouds and precipitation in the form of rain, fog, thunderstorms, or even snow. So let's jump into the first type of weather front, and that is a cold front. Now, a cold front forms when there is a cold air mass that runs into a warm air mass. The cold air mass is moving much faster than the warm air mass, and so the cold air mass will lift the warm air mass out of its way. As this warm air mass rises, the water vapor in it condenses and because of this, clouds can form and precipitation can fall. There may be wind involved along a cold front as well. Overall, the temperature and pressure differences between the two different air masses are what cause these winds. As the cold air keeps moving along, so does this cold front and can bring drastic changes to weather very suddenly. There could be a thin line of storms right at the front that moves as the cold front moves. So for example, in spring and summer, the storms may be thunderstorms that could produce things like tornadoes or hail. And in the late fall and winter, these cold front storms can bring snow. As this cold front passes, it's important to note that the temperatures left behind it are typically much cooler than before. And this air is also much more likely to be less humid. Next up, let's talk about a warm front. This is when warm air masses run into cold air masses and this creates this warm front. In this situation, the warm air mass is moving faster than the cold air mass and the warm air mass will then flow up over the cold air mass. As this warm air rises, it also cools and due to this, that can bring some clouds and sometimes some lighter precipitation. Now, as after this warm front passes, the air left behind is typically quite warmer and more humid. Next up is an occluded front. This is when a warm air mass becomes trapped between two cold air masses. This warm air mass is then lifted up above the cold air. The weather that occurs due to this is typically cloudy and some precipitation along this type of front is also common. So the reason this is called an occluded front is because of that cold air mass that overtakes a warm air mass and pushes it up due to the other cold air mass. This causes that warm air to become trapped or occluded between the two colder air masses. Like I said, occluded fronts can bring a range of different types of weather. It can be rain or thunderstorms or snow or a mixture of rain and snow. And how severe this weather is really just 
depends on the temperature differences between the warm and cold air masses and at what speed they are moving. This arrival of an occluded front um, is typically marked by a change in wind direction, air temperature, um, and barometric pressure. Next up, let's talk about a stationary front. This is when two air masses stop moving when they meet. They stall out and can bring clouds and precipitation to the same physical geographical area for many days. In this type of front, these two different air masses with different temperatures and moisture levels are very close in proximity, but neither one of them is strong enough to push the other out of the way. And so as a result, this becomes a stationary front and this line between the two air masses can become less defined. So like I said, these fronts can cause weather conditions that last for days or even weeks as these two air masses interact and create changing weather patterns. These stationary fronts can bring different types of precipitation as well, including thunderstorms, fog, um, or they may not bring precipitation at all. It could bring clear skies. So overall, weather fronts are a boundary zone that separates two different air masses. These boundaries affect weather patterns that we experience here on the ground. Depending on the type of front and how strong they are, a variety of weather conditions can occur from changes in temperature and humidity to the formation of thunderstorms, hurricanes, and even tornadoes. Meteorologists' main job is understanding how these weather fronts work and how they will affect our local environment as well as our day-to-day -day life. So it's important for students to learn more about weather fronts because this helps us to learn more about the natural world around us. And that's all we have for today. Make sure to do those four worksheets in your workbooks and remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.